Hello, so now we will talk about the manufacturing process of solar cells. Silicon based solar cells, simple standard manufacturing process. This is the first part of, um, of the manufacturing process because in different parts we will discuss different steps of uh, manufacturing or also called fabrication. Hmm. So here in this illustration you see that um, there is a monocrystalline silicon based solar cell and the other one is polycrystalline silicon based. So these are very rough sketches. Hmm. You can see that the polycrystalline surface of course will have different orientations of the crystal. So the light will reflect in a different, uh, you know, differently from this different pieces of these crystals because each one of them may have any random orientation and that is why it looks slightly different. It does not look as smooth or you know single colored as the um, as a monocrystalline surface. What is also important uh, for you to understand is that the the color of the silicon vapors that you actually see is because of the reflection of the light because of the interference patterns also. You have a silicon nitride layer on top of the silicon vapor mm. and the thickness of this nitride layer also decides how what will be the interference pattern of the light and hence the color can slightly change. Also, if you see the wafer at a different angle, mm, then you may have different colors. Okay, now let's talk about the manufacturing steps. So, see all of these are the manufacturing steps for a very standard process which is commonly used, you know, commercially used. You start with a silicon ingot. Mm, we know how to prepare that. Then we dice it using a saw. When we dice it using a saw, what happens there is certain damage caused by the sawing process mm. and we need to get rid of the damaged parts that is known as the saw damage edge. Mm. Later on I will discuss each individual step. Second part or second step is the texturing of the surface. What is texturing? Texturing means you give a certain pattern to a surface. If something is very flat, you give it certain patterns that is known as the texturing. So we do that for our silicon wafer. That is the next step. Now when we do this texturing, often we are using certain chemicals to do it. And because of that, you may have some leftover chemicals, you know, there may be some um, contamination because of these chemicals. So you will clean it using an acidic clean. Now we will do diffusion. Huh? Diffusion of POCl3. Now one thing you need to understand or remember that in the standard process we typically start our starting wafer is the P-doped silicon wafer. Hmm. So initial ingot when we are when you're preparing it using one of the methods we discussed before what you will do is you will dope it with a you know, with boron. So you have a P-doped material to start with. And now, in order to make the, in order to create the P-N junction, what you need to do is you also need to now have a layer of the N-type material. So instead of taking a separate silicon wafer and, you know, attaching P-N N uh, wafers, we don't do that. What we do is, uh, we diffuse some phosphorus into your previously P-doped material. Mm. And there, there will be certain layer of, of N material on in your P dope material itself. Okay, so for that purpose, you need to do this diffusion of POCl3. It can also we can also use phosphoric acid for this purpose. Now, when you do this, then there is some phosphosilicate glass that auto that you know that is also as a byproduct. You also get some phosphosilicate glass. So you have to clean that. And then you will do edge isolation, hmm. silicon nitride layer patterning or growing. And then you will do the metallization, which means patterning the electrodes or contact pads hmm. using metals, silver on top, typically and aluminum in the bottom. So you will do the screen printing hmm. and then finally put everything together inside the furnace. So you will do the co-firing of everything. So these are the different steps. Let's talk about the step number one. But before that, you need to understand what is saw damage. As I mentioned, when you are slicing your wafer from the ingot, you will have certain residual contaminants. <coughs> and you may also have some damages to the surface. So damage of the surface is in the form, it could be in the form of cracks. 
could be in the form of uh, you know distorted crystal orientations and so on your material could have become weaker so that needs to be that weaker part or that damaged surface needs to be removed okay now you know i showed you the silicon wafer in the previous class now i have a small piece of the of the silicon wafer when you have um, when you dice, dice a big cylinder and you get the wafers you get these extremely thin wafers this is what you have as a silicon wafer so which surface will have the surface damage it's the top surface huh? because you cut it like that so it's the top surface will which will have the surface uh, saw damage so you need to actually remove the part from the surface so that type of that edge is called the surface saw damage edge edge the word itself means just removal of the of some material so there are different types of etching processes you can do etching something known as the dry etching and something known as a wet etching so something that is dry you can imagine that it is more like you know using for example a high energy plasma okay so you can use oxygen plasma that will eat up some of your material from the surface that is your uh, dry edge wet edge on the other hand is done using wet chemicals so in the case of silicon here for the solar cell manufacturing we are pretty much using a lot of wet processes huh? so chemical based process we will do a wet edge okay how will we do that okay so what we do is we take an alkaline solution mm. so in di water deionized water you will mix either sodium hydroxide or you will uh, or potassium hydroxide or you can have tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide also tmah so one of these things you will take and you will dissolve it in deionized water that is your h solution now you dip your wafer into it mm. what is the chemical reaction that is taking place that is on the screen mm. actually the process is you can see that it depends on both your oh ions mm. and the and the content of water so what you need is you need both you need enough hydroxide uh, hydroxyl ions and you need enough water so initially you can keep it so you you will basically balance the rate of the reaction of your etching you know how much do you want to etch you also don't want to etch away the silicon wafer itself right now you're doing just the saw damage etch hmm. so you need a very thin layer to be removed if you etch away your entire wafer or or you know a lot of a very thick uh, portion of your wafer then now you are left with a very thin wafer which is uh, difficult to handle it will break again and again so in order to control this etch rate you can play with the parameters and what are these parameters it's the concentration of of uh, the oh minus ions and the concentration of water okay so the standard in the standard process what we use let's say we used a uh, koh or potassium hydroxide then we use 30 to 40% solution and the temperatures that are used are 70 to 80 degrees centigrade now another important uh, term is anisotropic isotropic and anisotropic these are two important terms so you here the h is anisotropic what does this mean that the etching is it prefers one orientation in one direction the etching is uh, stronger than in the other direction the etch rates are higher hmm. so something that only that has a preferred orientation which is uh, you know higher which takes place with with higher rate in a certain direction that is known as anisotropic and isotropic the word means that it is isotropic it so it's the same in all directions so this is this these terms are also used for describing properties certain type of um, amorphous materials will have a more uh, isotropic properties which means the properties are same in all directions on the other hand materials like graphite which have a layered orientation they have certain so electrical conductivity is different in one direction and in another direction perpendicular direction you will have a different value so these are anisotropic properties okay so in this case when we do this koh h this is anisotropic h okay for now you need to understand that at higher temperatures the anisotropy decreases to some extent and that is why here we are using relatively higher temperatures and what we need to 
remove is about you know 5 to 10 micrometers depending on your the sawing process that you used hmm. you will use something between 5 to 10 micrometers and the etch rate that is typically used is 2 to 4 micrometer per minute hmm. so you these are highly controlled processes okay in addition to KOH, you can also use an acidic etch at this point, which can be done using, high, using hydrofluoric acid or nitric acid. So these are some of the methods for getting rid of the saw damaged portion, which is your first step of manufacturing the silicon-based uh, silicon solar cells.